Father Lord, um, I just thank you for an opportunity to um, study at your feet. Um, in a Bible study like this, um, we come before you not as experts, but as um, students of the word. Yes. Uh, we've come here to share our hearts, our experiences, our testimonies, and uh, to, to, to be light and to be conduits by which your word is spread and mm. is um, you know, passed through to people who need to hear a word in season. So Lord Almighty, I pray that you take over our um, mm. speech. You are the one who is at work in us, but to will and to do of your good pleasures. Yes, you know what everyone on this line needs. You know what everyone who is watching this broadcast needs. You know what everyone who will watch this broadcast at some point in the future needs to hear. And I pray that what we say today will not be of our human authorship, but yes, rather sir. we yield our vessels to speak your word, to speak mm. your word, so that those who listen will be edified and blessed, and you and you alone will take the glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hey. Yes, mm -hmm. so recap from last week, sir. Something oh, yeah. to uh, it. Yes, so just quickly, how I got even to the message was so I, from time to time, I come and uh, check what I've missed. And um, that morning, I had um, annoyed my wife. And um, <laughs> but the issue was that I, I didn't know that I had done that. So I was actually feeling like, you know, I, sh I had a reason to be angry or, or, or something of that nature. And um, usually um, things can escalate very fast. Um, mm -hmm. And so I walked away, um, came back and just realized that I needed to go and, you know, listen to the word of God. And so I just clicked on YouTube. And so I saw the last week's message. Uh, um, it, was, it had been uploaded. So I was like, ah, let me listen. And, you know, one of the reasons why I pray that prayer about, you know, that those who would listen afterwards, because sometimes... Yeah, uh, God still, God has a way of speaking to people with the message that was broadcast live and is, is put on somewhere in some platform. Someone else mm. will come at a point when they need to hear that, and That's the true. Holy Spirit will draw you to it. So the Holy Spirit drew me to that the message of last week, and so I started listening. No, so before then I didn't know what was on the message, so I had no, you know, pretext or anything. But mm. I knew what I was going through and what was burning in my heart. My wife was upstairs, she was angry, and I was thinking that I was right or for some reason. Mm. Uh, and then next thing, um, Daddy A.Y. and um, Pastor Folara are talking about, you know, love. And Pastor Folara immediately said, he started off, and he may not remember this. So this was not the, he wasn't, this was not the word itself. But he said that he mentioned, he said, you know, that from time to time, he and Mommy Wora, um, Pastor Mommy Wora, have disagreements. You know, and you know, there are times that there there are issues or there are quarrels, and you know, that's one of the things that I feel is very important that we're able to relate the relatability, the ability to relate with the people who speak the word is so important because it makes you find yourself in in these mm. situations. So hearing that, I was like, ah, okay, I need to listen to this message. And, you know, I, so I said, I listened and I was putting down. So I sent Pastor Paul a message and said, wow, I'm listening to this message at the moment. And so something dragged me away. I had to come back to it in the night. And that was when our conversation started. And so the few things I picked up that really blessed me and really spoke to me. And just, you know, for the records, the moment I heard the first bit, you know, I realized the Holy Spirit immediately <laughs> convicted me about how I was wrong. Mm. So I paused the message, went upstairs to go and apologize to my wife. Wow. Um, Let me clap yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I went to apologize and then I came back down. Um, then, yeah, so later on, I continued with the message. So the first thing that came to me that, um, and as it was coming to me, I was sending the messages to Pastor Fola. I didn't know he would be awake. Um, so the first thing that came to me that he said was that that really sh struck a chord with me. He said, the more, I, the more of God I know is measured, determined, measured, I put slash determined by the love or the more of God I show. Mm. So that was the first thing that really, you know, uh, hit me. Um, and um, I'm sure we'll, we'll talk about that later. The second thing that really came to me also was, um, he says, 
one way we know we have uh, the Holy Spirit is by love, the evidence, love. If there is love in our lives, you know, there is love that is visible for everyone to see, then it is evidence of the Holy Spirit. And that why that was so profound for me is that, you know, there are a lot of things you can do to deceive both people and yourself mm. that, you know, you are walking with the Holy Spirit. But the, the one of the most important things that, you know, seems to be missing is, which is a, a fruit of the Holy Spirit, is love. And, and that was important to me because think about when they came to meet Jesus and they said to him, uh, what's the greatest commandment? There, there were so many commandments about stealing, about you know, idolatry and about so many other things. But Jesus summarized everything with love. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. So, you know, that was very profound to me. And then um, <coughs> the next one was, you can't love other people more than you love your spouse at home. Mm. Now, why this really hit me was that um, I remember a time I was having a conversation with my wife and she said that the greatest testimony you can have as a Christian is that your spouse, your children actually do testify that you are a Christian, mm. you know? And I was like, wow, because you could portray so many things to everybody out there. But those, you know, and, and I can imagine, you know, the irony whereby people know you or think you are this person, but those who really know you and see you when you are not putting up a show for people or when you don't have to put up a show for people, are going like, huh, <laughs> I wish you knew who this person was. Hmm. So um, that, that that's really key. You can love more people more than you love your spouse at home. And again, another thing that came to me about this particular point is, and especially for those in ministry, you can pour out your whole heart, life, energy into people. And you prioritize people over your spouse, over your family. Mm. And I've seen and heard of people who have, you know, crashed their marriages, you know, you know, had their children go the wrong way because they were doing the work in court, you know. And so it's so important to remember that um, ministry and everything you do should and never replace the your first primary assignment your family mm. yeah and you then know the, what? the Sorry, last you know, yes. to just interject there actually the bible says that uh you know if we don't look after our own family we are actually worse than infidel than an infidel just to buttress hmm. you know that point it must begin from home go on sir yes sir yeah so, yeah so that was really really profound for me and then the the last point i wrote down and i think that relates to you know the conversation for today love begins from me mm. i can't love you if i do not love me mm. Uh, and mm. so um, that that's so key. That's so important. Mm. Um, I cannot overstate it. Um, mm. You can't love. I can't love you if I don't love me. Mm. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dr. Ohio. You know, it just brings us to the scriptures, actually, um, that, you know, the Lord Jesus, and if you are watching tonight we are looking at a topic do i really love me if you're on slide or do uh, the hashtag is love slido l-o-v-s-l-i-d-o you can ask questions or you can we like to see your contributions and thank you for those contributing already okay now jesus when asked in mark chapter 12 okay mark chapter 12 you know what you said that uh, you can't truly love other people if i don't first if you don't first love me you know uh, there's a way uh, let me just see how uh it came to us here okay love begins with 
me. I cannot truly really love you if I don't really love me. So let me repeat that. Love begins with me. I cannot truly really love you if I don't really love me. And that's it. Our topic tonight, do I really love me? They ask Jesus, Mark chapter 12, when we read from where the conversation started, uh, from verse number 28, when uh, a man came to Jesus and was asking, just like you said, uh, which is the first commandment? Who is the first and most important? That's the way the expanded Bible, the Amplified also puts it. Which is the first and most important? And rightly, like you said, Jesus now answers in verse 29, Mark, uh, the gospel according to Mark chapter 29, he says, the Jesus answered him, the first of all, the commandment is, hear, O Israel, the Lord, our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Since this is the first commandment. Number one, the Lord our God is one. So there's no, you know, divisiveness about God. God is whole. Mm -hmm. God is not fragmented. You know, Paul was uh, rebuking the church in Corinth. And he heard that there are divisions among you. Oh, I am of Paul. I am of Apollos. He said, you are carnal. <clears throat> when you think like that, you are carnal. The love of God is not in you. He said, did Paul die for you or did Apollos die for you? No, God is one. So that's the first thing. And you shall love the Lord your God. Now look at the progression, sir. And watch this, that verse 29, sorry, 30. With all your heart. So if we remove the your and personalize it, I will love the Lord my God with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind, all my strength. So it starts with my heart. Love starts with my heart, starts from my heart, my soul, my mind, my strength. And it says with all. So it's not like um, half of me loves, 90% uh, of my heart loves, 10% doesn't. No, it's whole. It's, it's meant to be whole, the whole of me. I love with me heart. Let me use a, you know, the, uh, um, we live in Liverpool, the Scouse accent, the Scouses. Yeah. Right? I love me, God, with me heart, me soul, me mind, me strength. Mm. This is the first commandment, me. So I can't love anyone if I don't really love me. We are going to look tonight at mm. some things that will help us to see if we truly love me. If I truly love me, you know, that's one of the things. And then look at the next command. The next now says to just buttress that. If people are asking for that scripture, for what scripture backs that statement? It says, and the second is like this. You shall love your neighbor as your self. So let's repeat that your again. I love with me, heart, me, soul, me, my, me, strength. And then I love, love. me, neighbor. As me, self. Self. So number one, I've downloaded the love. It's in my heart. It's in my mind. It's in my soul. It's in my strength. <clears throat> then I can, from me, the way I love me, love my neighbor. Mm. So the challenge, sir, is that if we are struggling to really love people, is because we don't have that love first in our heart. Very strong. From last week, you see, we, we looked at it and uh, we saw something in Romans chapter 5, verse 5. 
we can't really love and truly love without God. 1 John 4, 7 to 8, which we read last week when we we're trying to define what love is, we found a simple definition. And don't, don't, don't go too far. Don't expand it. Don't use too many words. You know, I find out that when we use too many words at times, we, <clears throat> we can get confused. The definition of love is in 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 to 8. It says, Beloved, let us love one another. Now look at it. Love is of God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God, which means I cannot love without God. Outside of God, I can't love. I can't truly love. Please, people, we are looking at the topic, do I really love me? The love we're talking about here is not human love. Mm. Let us spell this out clearly. It is the love that verse 9 I think verse 8 of 1 John 4, 7 defines. He says, he who does not love does not know God. For God is love. That's the definition of love. So if I don't know God, I cannot truly love. And what shows that I know God is not that I know scriptures. <clears throat> it's not that I know Genesis to Revelation, and I can quote it by heart. No. My knowledge of God is determined by the love <laughs> that I show. The God I know manifests in the love I show. So I don't know God to start with if I don't love people. And I cannot love people outside God. So when we say, I love you, Simple definition. Replace love with God every time you use the word love from now on. I'm simply saying, I, God, you. I, God, and you. I, God, you. God is the center. God determines what happens between you and I. Not, I don't determine it. Mm. Mm. Because, Dr. Ohio, if we go by the dictates of our feelings, <laughs> the dictates of our flesh, the pain, the hurt, you and I cannot love anybody. Hmm. We can have affection. You know, you see that beautiful damsel and you just like her. You like uh, a figure. You like her face. You like the way she talks. You like she's so nice. So what if sh she stops being nice? <laughs> and if we go back to that scripture in Mark chapter 12, the progression starts with our heart. That's the key. If our heart is filled with love, if our heart encounters God who is love, then we can begin to love with our soul. Mm. Do you know the mistakes are? Our hearts is not truly full of love, but our souls are, our emotions are. Our minds are. And then, of course, we figure it out with our strength. You know, mm. I remember a certain couple that uh, we had the privilege to counsel. And the focus of the brother was how he was going to propose. <laughs> that was the whole focus. So he was using every strength. Let me use that. His imagination his soul to conjure up how he will do that fantastic proposal. How he will get on one knee, how we will have a crowd of witnesses. You know, the focus was the proposal. Will you marry me? And we had to rechannel. Sir, the person you're asking to marry you, do you love her in your heart first? Are you sure you love her in your heart? Are you sure it's not something else you love? Mm. Or let me use the word like. Because God cannot be evolved, involved and it turns to something else. The love of God we are talking about, we saw last week, is a sacrificial love. But you see, the problem now is because it starts with me, do I really love me? 
Do I understand what it means to love me? That's the key tonight. Our topic again, do I really love me? And if we replace that word love again with the definition, do I really God me? Sir, please people exactly. online, everyone will like to hear your comments at this stage. So please comment on Facebook Live, comment, share your experiences. And please, I've not seen anyone on the slide or though, please just go on the app and say, look, I'm here. And let's see your comments. Okay, what are they? What do you think are the signs that you love yourself? Okay, what are the signs, right, that you love yourself? We'd like to hear from you, please, everybody. So you can comment either on Facebook Live or on the love uh, on the slide or do. So what are the evidences? How can somebody really say they love themselves? How do you know you love yourself? You know, okay. now looking at the context of, I can't love myself now. Do you know what, Ohio? I can't <laughs> actually love myself without God in my heart. Uh, First, let me give you an, uh, a, a, a story. I was, uh, many, many years ago, I was jobless. I, you know, resigned my job because I believe God told me to resign the job and I went into depression thereafter because I didn't figure out <laughs> what, what were the next moves for me. And I was very young. I was about, uh, if I remember precisely, I was just about 20, 27, 28 years old. And I've been working prior to that for the past two, three years. And I just resigned, okay? So I went into depression because now I didn't know what to do with my life. So I said, okay, I think I want the best job. So I started looking for very good jobs. So I went to this uh, multinational company. I said, yeah, I'll go there with all my boldness. I'll go, I'm a man of faith. <laughs> I just walk in there and tell them I'm looking for a job. This is my CV and uh, you know who can I talk to? And I got there when I saw the security when I saw the protocol to even enter the facility, I started feeling sorry for myself. I started feeling like a worm. I started feeling so, uh, what's the word now? Insecure. Then I just saw this young man. He steps out of a car and walks right to the gate, confidently introduces himself and they pass him in. And I saw the way he walked majestically. And I was wondering, who's that? Who's, whose son is that? And I found out he's the son of a wealthy, wealthy personality in my country. And I looked at it and I, so it touched me. I said, why did this guy have this so much confidence? Mm. And the answer I got, he knew the son of whom he was. He knew what he was of. Mm. And for me, I felt sorry for myself because I saw myself as inferior, an, an inferior human being, inferior quality, jobless young man, directionless, who doesn't know what, where he's going. And that, Dr. Ohio, mm. unconsciously, people don't realize. I got to realize I didn't love myself. Mm. Mm. I did it. By the way, by that time I'd already I was already a Christian. I'd given my life. This was around 1990, uh, if I remember precisely. This was like 1993, 1993, 1994. So I'd given my life. I'd been a Christian for years, but I didn't know what I was of the son of who I was. I didn't know I was the son of, of love, of God. So one very serious sign, people, subtle, 
that you don't love me. Our topic again, do I really love me? Is how you see yourself. Do you see yourself as a worm, as inferior? When you look into the mirror, do you like what you see? It's a sign you don't love yourself. I think we have a comment. I don't know if you want to say anything at this stage. Uh, do I really love me? Uh, there's a comment. <clears throat> okay, online. Uh, on slide, uh, do, thank you for that while the Dr. Ayo was speaking his thoughts, okay? Yes. The person says, when I do things to please people at the expense of my own happiness, and I can genuinely say no, without feeling guilty, that shows I love myself. Thank you for that contribution. And look at carefully the way this is worded. Pleasing people at the expense of my own happiness. You see, if we pause there, if you are not, uh, you can't give what you don't have. So if some of us are stretching ourselves to please people when we don't even please ourselves, when we are not even pleased with our own selves. So that throws away our happiness. We struggle. And then you find out the people you are pleasing at your own expense don't even care. I will share something from John <laughs> chapter 15 uh, to us tonight. You know? And it says, yeah, at such times, you know, when you now say no, and you know you are not, and you don't feel guilty. Yeah, because you know that you can't give what you don't have. Thank you for that contribution, Doctor Ohio. Do you want to say something, and then I want to share something yeah, with us. Yeah, yeah. Um, on, thank you so much. I've been blessed just listening to what you were saying. Um, I was just thinking about how, for instance, um, you you meet people who perhaps are so. Um, difficult to relate with. Um, sometimes it, may, it could be in the school setting, you know, uh, bullies, uh, people who uh, they just look like they have no joy, and it looks like they 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 just love to inflict pain on people. And um, it, it, I remember one day it, it came to me that you need to really look past that whole persona that uh, and realize that these are people who have insecurity uh, they are insecure in themselves chances that they have been abused chances are that um they the only way they are able to find some form of value is by oppressing other people mm. and um so 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 that really brings me to the point of um the fact that our environment and how we grow up and you know i think it as parents is something that we need to be very conscious of because we don't realize how the things, what the th the things we say, and the things we do to our children. I mean, I have two young children. Just something as simple as saying to one, "Oh, wow, well done for that," and the other would quickly, immediately say, "What about me?" Mm. You know, and um, it's we, we are learning to ensure that we do not discriminate. Or, uh, I mean, I I remember for my my. Um, uh, so something I recently had to have a one-to-one -to -one, um, with my with my mom, uh, and to share because when I was growing up, uh, I had um, there was a neighbor who was in the same class with me who was, uh, I mean he was a brain like I mean he was very intelligent, and he every time we got our uh, results back from school, I always dreaded the question that was going to come, which was. What did the neighbor get? Mm, so mm, comparing um, you to the to, yes, absolutely. Okay. And you see, as you know, we don't realize how much these things shape children, and you know, so that really affected my confidence as in terms of what I thought about myself in relation to um, academics. So I went through the whole of primary school and even secondary school, mm. actually believing and thinking that I was a dollar. Mm. Um, I did really bad in school. Um, had really low grades, um, was always at the bottom of the class, um, hmm. was, um, and there, it was just perception in my head that I, I was not intelligent, that there was no, I had no, nothing to offer or nothing to, to, to give, uh, when it came to, to academics. 
and it's it was so bad that anyone who went to primary school with me who finds out that i went on to do at, into academics would be surprised it, it was that bad um i was like literally at the bottom of the class um and but it was all from the fact that as a child i was so sensitive to the things that people said and my parents didn't do it intentionally <laughs> You know, but I mean, we grew up in a community or, or I come from a community where I grew up that, you know, sometimes we just say things and we don't you know, really think about how it impacts. Mm. And, you know, even in terms of perceptive confidence in myself, I remember that, um, you know, and, and I remember my mom was joking. She was joking. You know, one day she was just, you know, playing with me. She was playing with me and then she said, oh, wow, you know, look at you, very, you know, look at you, very, very ugly boy. She was oh, joking. Boy. She was joking, hmm. right? But as a child, that stuck with me. And hmm. from that point, it affected how, you know, I became just, you know, I mean, trust me, I was, a, uh, I was, I don't know what, to, I was, a, I was a wreck. Low hmm. self-esteem. And I went through, so that's coupled with the issue of the whole academics. So, and I went through second primary school, secondary school like that. And it just, you know, eventually, you know, I, things changed, especially when I became a Christian. Mm. Um, but because that's, that's uh, actually what I, I wanted to ask. That mm. I mean, you grew up from being bottom of the class, yeah, and then believing you were ugly. That's oh yeah, <laughs> that's a double whammy. Double Italian. whammy, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Double and whammy. today, you are an associate. Professor, you're in academics of law, the yes, doctor sir. of law. So what changed? I'm sure people will like to hear this. Yes, what oh, changed? Yeah. So um, when I was in high school, um, in the penultimate year of uh, high school, just before you know doing the um, O levels, I had a teacher who was a Christian, who is a Christian, because she's um, and I've had to recently go and look for her to let her know how she impacted my life positively. Wow. And so um, it was history, and I I um I remember then I just I said I got playing some get into some very delinquent you know attitude in, in school because I just thought what's the point, and so you know please every time any time you see a child who is acting up and is misbehaving, you know check there must there might be something you are missing in their background that's making them you know behave like that, mm. and but she just took this interest in me. You know, and I would skip classes. She would come and look for me and say, what are you doing there? Come back into class. And initially I was like, why is this woman disturbing me? Leave me alone. I want to be, I want to be a delinquent. I want to, you know. And then the results came out. And for the first time in my life, I had a first in the subject. I still remember looking at it and wondering, like, did she make a mistake? You know, there must be some error here. But that singular uh, um, incident for the first time in my hmm. whole life that was the first time i realized that oh actually you are not done and what changed that because a woman helped you to change the way you saw yourself myself absolutely that hmm. was the change to the turning point the acts of that woman what she said what she did as a teacher those who are teachers and everyone who can you know been through teachers you know that Teachers can either shape or, or, or break, you know, the way you think about yourself, you know. Mm. And so she played a very defining role in shaping how I saw myself. So that mm. was so pivotal. And even in terms of how I saw myself, in terms of in terms of looks and in the, I remember I have a cousin. She doesn't remember ever saying this. I'm sure she'll be like, hmm, you know, who came into the house one day? She came because we stayed in the university community, and she just looked at me and said, oh wow. Hello, you know, you know, um, Ohio. Oh, wow, you know, Julie, you're the most handsome boy in this, you know, in this family. And I remember wow. looking at her going, I was probably like eight or nine years old. And I remember going, okay, that stuck with me also too. So um, when I became a Christian, I realized that there were all those fractures and, and, and things still affect me to date. And I actually had to have a sit down with my mom, you know, that was in 2015. I was like, mom, mommy, this is what happened then. And she was so pained. She was like, I don't remember that. Like, of course you don't remember. She was like, but you know, I would never have meant that. I was like, I know you did not mean it. And I, you know what? I am a Christian now. And I realized how these things affected my belief, 
confident and love for myself and you know now that i i have found healing i you know and gone through a process and you know i really want to just you know let you know and so we spoke about it we prayed about it and you know <laughs> she, she felt so bad but you know i know she does not she did not intend it but you see the, even the things you say that look, seem so casual or so careless they can actually break or make the con you know uh, uh, um increase the confidence of your of your of your children so yeah so that was my own experience today okay. and i can tell you that even till now i still from time to time you know i'm still what it's still a, a walking process it's still it's not mm. i'm not there yet in, in terms of being confident yeah in who God, you know so okay. are, yeah all right now let's look at these people uh online and thank you the topic again is am i do i really love me so please we can leave that online uh the title uh, uh just have that displayed so that people can contribute do i really love me hmm. now Dr. Ohio just shared what changed a young boy, innocent boy, to believe he was not intelligent. Words, words spoken by, you know, uh, unconsciously, not without any harm, by someone of influence in his life. What made him, apart from believing he wasn't intelligent that he wasn't good looking i mean you can see him today i leave you to judge that but if you are a single <laughs> lady you are not allowed to look because irene uh, i tell you irene irene is uh irene is very good <laughs> don't don't mess with her husband okay and i remembered you know if irene will remember uh, i think one of the things she told me about you was that you were very good looking she, she liked you know, and uh, I, <laughs> let me say this uh, off camera. It's off camera, okay? People are not watching, <laughs> so everybody shut their ears. I, I realized that when Ohio first joined the church as a young man, I noticed that, you know, ladies were always flocking around him, you know, and I found out why, because he was good looking. <laughs> are you still there? It seems like you're, we're having a glitch on your, uh, on your, uh, okay i think your okay your internet seems to be glitching oh, you know so sorry. i can testify that you're good looking <laughs> so <laughs> but what changed someone told him he wasn't good looking words now <laughs> let's bring that to the word of god you see loving me loving myself is actually seeing myself the way god sees me <laughs> The, the way love, God, which is love, sees me. And that's where the power of the word of God comes in. Look at human words changed you. Uh, uh. Made you believe you are not intelligent. Made you believe you are not good looking. Uh. What changed you again? Human words. Word. Uh. But then there's a higher word. Hallelujah. The word of God. The love of God, which is preached to us through the gospel, that is what helps us to see ourselves the way God sees us, the way love sees us. You know, there's something, time will fail us. There's something in John chapter 15 where the Lord Jesus was talking about, you know, comparing, said he's the, uh, he's the vine. John chapter 15 is a long passage. I'll say, go and read it. John chapter 15 from verse 1 to 14. He says, he's divine. My father is a vine dresser. And he now talks about the branch in me that does not bear fruit. He takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that he may bear more fruit. If we stop there, he's talking about two branches here. One that is bearing fruit. The other one not bearing fruit. And you know the amazing thing, Dr. Hayo, they are both in... Yeah the vine. Mm. They are both in Christ. One is bearing fruit, one is not. Like I said, I realized I was in Christ because I'd given my life to Christ for many years, but I was still battling a low self-esteem. So I was not manifesting the fruit of love for myself. Mm. You see, one sure way, let me tell you, 
is how you see yourself. That's what helps you to know if you truly love yourself. And let me say this. Another sure way, how you treat other people. If you mm -hmm. hate people, if you are bitter towards people, it's a sign of what's in your heart. It's a sign you don't love yourself. Mm -hmm. If you always want to revenge and you know give it to people, make sure you 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 you, you say things that will hurt them. And this is very uh, popular with spouses, married people. You know, we've had privilege seeing couples, you know, uh, counseling couples, and you hear the sort of stuff, Dr. Ohio, they say to one another in anger. It only reveals what's in the heart. Oh. It shows you don't love yourself. If you love yourself, you will, it's, let me, <laughs> for those of us married, it is measured by first how you treat your spouse. If you love yourself, do you know the scripture? It says that any the wife, the man is the head, the wife is the body. The way you treat your body shows you how much you love yourself. Mm -hmm. So if you maltreat your body, which is your wife figuratively, you, it shows you don't love yourself. Forget it. Mm -hmm. The sort of words you say to each other. And it just shows the state of the heart. And I say this, you know, something we learned last Sunday. You've got to get to a point where the first thing we see Jesus said about love is it starts from the heart, my heart. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. The love of God is poured into our heart by the Holy Spirit that is given to us. It says, now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured. Where? Into our hearts. It's not poured into our minds. You see? Our hearts is, is what spills to our mind. That is our emotions, our soul, and then our strength. So we try to do things with our strength, with our soul's mind, and our heart is unfruitful. That John chapter 15, the branch is in the vine, but it's not fruitful. One of them is not. What is the fruit? Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. The fruit of the Spirit, the first thing you see there, Dr. Ohio is love, <laughs> joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, mm. meekness. Against such, the Bible says, there is no law. You become unstoppable when you are manifesting the fruit of the Spirit. The first in love. Why? Because 1 Corinthians chapter 13 tells us everything will fail. Everything. Hmm. But love never fails. The devil is not afraid of any Bible carrying Christian. The devil is not afraid of anybody who can quote the Bible. The devil is afraid when we are manifesting as sons of God. How do we manifest? Love. Jesus said, By this shall all men know that you hmm. have, that you love one another. I mean, that, that you love me. Sorry, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. Indeed. He said, when you have love one for another. So you can't give what you don't have. So if you find that you, are, you hate your spouse, it's a sign your heart is full of hatred. Hmm. You need a new heart. You find that you're always bickering. You don't say any nice thing to anybody. It's a sign you don't love yourself. Mm. It's a very good measurement. So if you are not married, what about people? What do you say to people? How do you see people? You just don't like people. You just realize, no, 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 no. He that does not love does not know God. Mm. It's a sign you don't love yourself. So, you know, when people say things like that, you know, somebody made a comment on slide or though. Thank you for that. He said, you know you love yourself when you listen to your body. That is deep. <laughs> that is very deep. When you listen to your body. The body, do you know what? In this context, <laughs> spiritually, figuratively, metaphorically, your wife. Yeah. I wonder why people marry. 
you don't really know that the real test of love this is what people don't know dr Hayo. you're married eight years thank god i've been married 23 to the glory of god but i realize that marriage is actually the real test of the love of god so anybody who wants to marry the real test that you know god you love god is how you love your spouse whether you are male or female it's both ways so if you are always bickering fighting never reconciling you are happy to say nasty things to one another just to hurt the other person you don't love yourself there's no love in your heart you need a change of heart our focus is to love with all our hearts that love is god that love is sacrificial hmm. Hmm. it's so funny do i love me our topic again tonight you know we can look at other parameters no 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 it starts with me so the way i treat other people is a sign i don't love me i don't have love in my heart i don't so it's just a call to every one of us on this uh, fellowship on this broadcast tonight let us go and check the content of our hearts and out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks for you to go and apologize to your wife shows that you love your wife yeah um on that, that point <laughs> i remember the the first um, few months and years of my marriage um if there was a disagreement or any issue um there was always this tendency on my on my part to try and you know rationalize what you know who is wrong and whether or not um i'm at fault guilty and there was some <laughs> guilty too. yeah and this was the strange thing every time i would be there you know going in my mind oh you know i didn't do anything here da, 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 da. and i would just hear go and apologize and i'm like mm. <laughs> and initially I, I would fight it you know i would stretch the 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 minutes the hours of you know no but i realized that the more i did that i had no peace you won't um there's no peace in the home you won't have um, peace joy will go no joy joy exactly. everything so everyone, kindness everyone, will go everything goodness goes. will go your faithfulness <laughs> to your wife i'm telling you now i realized the times we've had serious rounds you start now thinking all sorts of irrational thoughts absolutely now let me just grant, teach, teach teach my spouse a lesson i done just grant mess all around sorts all sorts of thoughts go through your mind and, you, and i realized that actually it's the easiest way to open yourself up to the devil uh hmm. in terms of you know attacks and so gradually and so that, i think that's one of the key things to learn that at the end of the day it's a process because especially when you are coming from a damaged past hmm. whereby you are used to protecting your your brokenness where you are used to you know guarding yourself because another thing that i've realized is that when we do these things it's because we have developed this you know defenses to keep secure this identity even though it's broken now we mm. have become so used to so saying sorry for me was both my ego my pride and you know what does all that make me well you know what what does well how will she see me you know what does that you know it's giving you know i, I probably am creating this room for you know a, a, a precedence that you know is not good and, and that but at the end of the day it came to a point i realized that you have to either choose to submit to god or not mm. and god was you know and it was the funny thing no matter how bad it was god would always show me what i done wrong and you see there was a scripture that um i was given during our courtship and it came pastor will not remember again you know 
Um, so in one of those sessions, he said to me, he said, all men proclaim their faithfulness. Hmm. But a faithful man. But faithful man, find. who can find? That's my one of my scriptures as a as a, a man that has guided me through my in my marriage. Because all those times I have those conversations of why I'm right is me trying to proclaim my faithfulness. Hmm. You know, I've done this, I didn't do that. Da -da 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 -da. And then he would always show me what I could have done differently. And so gradually, just initially was always very initially hard to do. I would go and I would say sorry. And you know, this is the interesting thing about saying sorry. You could be saying sorry from a self-righteous point of view. Hmm. So there were times I went to say sorry from the point of let me be the bigger man here. So Come I'm on. To say sorry. <laughs> and then you know, I love my wife so much. She would then ask you a question: What are you sorry for? Hmm. <laughs> Our wives are good at those questions. I'm <laughs> selling sessions many times. <laughs> what, what what are you sorry for? And you know, I, I would then go almost like, ah, do you know what it took for me to come here and say sorry? And then you're asking me what I'm <laughs> sorry for. Why well, not just take it and let's just move on? And, and then she's like, no, they're tell me what you're sorry impressed. for. Not impressed because they they are the they're quickest to see when we're not sincere about these things. That's what I wanted to say, Dr. Ohio. <laughs> what we don't realize is mm. that the deep always mm. communicates with the deep. When you say sorry. Mm. There is, and it's from your heart, from a conviction. Mm. The other mm. party, if they are not no. evil in their heart, they pick it. <laughs> True. They know when mm. that sorry is from the heart. But let me balance something. Mm. You that they are always saying sorry to, and you are refusing to let go. You are playing with your peace, with your joy, mm. with your happiness. Mm. And you are pray, playing with your own progress, your own prosperity. Mm. All mm. these things mm. backfire. Mm. You see, that's where forgiveness comes in. There's something I realized about forgiveness lately. Do you realize that when they came to Jesus, teach us to pray? Do you know, literally was saying that every day we should pray, uh, forgive us our trespasses as mm. we Forgive those who trespass against us. So forgiveness is a daily thing. We must pray for. We must pray that God should help us. The day I got a little conviction of the Lord's prayer, oh, Father, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. I just stopped. I froze. I said, wait a minute. I'm telling God to forgive me the way I forgive people. Ooh. And my goodness... I knew my myself then. So I changed, you see, I changed the prayer this way. Sincerity <laughs> from the depth of my heart. I said, Lord, forgive me my trespasses and teach me and help mm. me to forgive other people the way you forgive me. Oh, from God. the sincerity of my heart, when I started praying like that, I realized too, I went further and I was led to always pray for the people who hurt me. Mm. Once I pray, it's difficult. You try it once, it's difficult. Try it, difficult. But the more you do it, the love flows. Mm. And the right not to revenge is actually what it means to forgive. You have the power to revenge. But you choose that, you know what? Vengeance is not mine. Mm. I will leave this person to God. But I choose for this for my own peace of mind. Let me tell us again. One way you know you love yourself. Our topic again tonight, do I really love me? Hmm. Don't miss this. Is how you forgive other people. Hmm. That's how you know if you really love yourself. Our time is fast spent. Let us quickly take the questions. There are some questions online. Thank you for the people who put it on slide.do. Uh, there's a question that says, okay, contribution. When you know your strengths and weaknesses, that's how you know you love me. Beautiful. Lovely, lovely contribution. Are you getting me? If you know yourself, yeah. you know your strengths, you know your weaknesses, and mm -hmm. you're not proud to try and be covering <laughs> up. Because it brings us to marriage again. I, you know, 
one thing couples don't realize is that the weakness that you are always hammering on that you see in your spouse. Mm, mm, mm. God brought you into their lives because you have strength in that area. Mm. Rather than rubbing it on their face and using it against them, cover them. Brings me to the next point. What you love, you cover. You don't expose. Mm. 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 You cover. The Bible says love covers a multitude of sins. Some of us just expose ourselves. You get married and then you expose yourselves. You go about exposing your husband, exposing your wife, exposing your home, exposing everything. No, 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 no. It's a very subtle way. Quick way for the enemy to destroy it. No, no, no. What you love, you cover. God loved mankind. Mankind sinned against God. Genesis. The first thing, after God told them the consequences, the Bible said he made coats of skins. He covered their nakedness. Mm, mm, mm. Love covers a multitude of sins. Somebody's asking a question here. Okay? So thank you for that, um, the, 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 the contribution there. Um, the question was, um, <clears throat> you know, another thing is, we give to what we love. The Bible says, for God so loved, the word that he gave. If you love me, if you love yourself, you will give to yourself. Remember, it starts with me. Hmm. Give myself affection. Give myself love. Give myself peace of mind. Give myself that joy. Release. Yes. Give myself rest. My, my wife hmm. said, give, hmm. Yourself, hmm. give myself rest. <laughs> <Love that. laughs> if you love me, I will rest. I will give to myself. I will not, I will forgive myself too. It's mm. part of giving. It's part of giving. That's true. You just do things and you hate yourself. Oh, I hate myself. I do this. Lack mm. of self-confidence. If we begin to yeah. see the way God sees see ourselves, the way God sees us, it's a sign we love ourselves. Yeah. Okay. Something else just came to me. That, yeah. um, also, when we say um, that you can't love people if you don't love yourself, also too, people can't love you if you don't love yourself. Beautiful, because, sir. Uh, you you can't accept love if you you hate you don't like yourself you don't love yourself. Beautiful, so. beautiful. You know something, sir. You see some people, people say nice things about them. They say, no, no, no. You are just fooling me. Why? Because they don't believe anything good about themselves. Mm. Mm. So when people even say good things about themselves, they are suspicious, or they say, no, 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 no. It's not true. You are just trying to make me feel. It's a sign you don't love yourself, you have a low self-esteem, you don't see yourself the way love, God, sees you. Sees you. Come on, beloved. That's what he calls us. Be loved. Mm. In other words, be loved. Receive it mm. so you can give it. Receive love so you can give it. Okay? Mm. A good question here. Somebody said, thanks for sharing your experience. Dr. Ohio can relate. Okay? Thank you for sharing. That's why I, I, I love Dr. Ohio. He's always very plain, simple practical and real all right okay how can you explain when you love people and chastise them but they continue in their ways and try to cause more havoc i want us to bring it to god's perspective okay god loves us and the bible tells us that it is those that god loves that he chastises mm -hmm. so god will chastise us okay mm -hmm. now let's look at it but then we continue in our ways god will <laughs> warn us we cause more havoc, then the consequences will not be our problem. Mm. So if I love people, I correct them out of love, not out of hatred, because I'm telling you, sir, the rod of correction, there's a way we use the rod as parents. We say we are using the rod, spare the rod, spoil the child. The rod of mm. correction, some of us don't know we have turned into a rod of destruction. Mm. You, you use the rod on a child to inflict pain and damage. You damage the body, you damage the soul. And words are more powerful even than, than, mm. than, than the physical rod. That's like true. your case in point, like what you shared with us earlier. So that's it. You can't, and one of the things I'm learning, Dr. Ohio, you cannot love people more than God loves them. Mm. You know, as a pastor, I've been guilty of that. 
and then I let and allow people now, because I'm not trying to uh, take the role of God in their lives unconsciously out of, in quotes, love. I realize that that's not love. We must correct people in love. We must chastise people in love. And when they continue in their ways, let them know the consequences. Are you getting me? And if the consequences come, that's it. The Bible says love does not insist on his own way. That's why God has not forced everybody on this planet as much as he loves us. He's not forced everybody to accept him. He could easily do it, but then that takes away the free will of man. So you don't have power over somebody's free will. You love them, you correct them, you correct them, they continue, the consequences will come. Yeah. Can I also yeah? say something? Yes, um, go on quickly. Depending on this context also too, um, how can you explain when you love people and chastise them? Do, do they know that you love them? Do mm. you show that you love them? Mm. Are they seeing only the rod and the chastisement? Are mm. they only seeing what comes across as perhaps criticism? That's I've right. seen only what comes aside. So it depends. I'm not saying that might be the case here, but that's a question you need to ask yourself. What have they seen? Which side? So like as Pastor Paula said, if your child or your child has ever seen is chastisement, correction, correction, correction. You never tell them when they do something right. You know, and in your mind, you're like, they should know I love you. I love them. <laughs> they won't know if you don't show it. That's right, sir. You know, so... That balance for, is very important. Yeah, thank you for that balance. You know, we always tell people what they cannot do. If all you hear all your life is, well, you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do this, and nobody tells you what you can do, it will affect your uh, the quality of your life because you grow up only being told what you cannot do. So our children, we tell them they can't do this. Please, let's tell them what they can do. That's the way the word of God also comes to us. Tells us what we can do. Hmm. Look at the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not, 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 thou shalt not. But then he tells us what we can do. Thou shalt love the love your, your, your God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your mind. You know? So let's get that balance. Thank you for bringing that perspective. Okay, someone, two contributions and then we close. Thank you, everybody, for joining tonight. Do I really love myself? Um, you know you love yourself when you become less and less concerned, worried about what other people think mm, mm, or what true, their true. opinions are about you. And also, let's balance that because I've seen people, I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> and you are doing what is not right. No, 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 I don't care no, about people's no. opinion. No, no sir. one can correct no you. No man. <laughs> Where no one can, no, 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 where you become hardened, please, all right? Let's balance things there. But of course, you don't live by people's opinion. You live by mm. God's word about you, God's opinion of you. Mm. So mm. it's always good for us to examine ourselves. And finally, someone says that you correct yourself and speak the truth to yourself. Ah, sir, that is one thing I will say personally i am learning mm. i practice this on myself without being too harsh on myself i try to balance things you know there have been times i see people treat me very badly i see people um more or less i just you know i feel used and then one day i was just meditating as i close with that john chapter 15 that i said we should go and read he talks about the tree, two branches. One is bearing fruit, one is not. He said the one that does not bear fruit is going to cut off. So please, there's a warning also. If we are not bearing the fruit of love, we don't know God, we're going to be cut off. It's a matter of time. You won't experience the, the, the fullness of God in our lives because we're not bearing fruit. God wants us to bear fruit. And that first fruit is love. Now, the other branch says, he, the one that is bearing fruit, he said we'll prune it. It will mm -hmm. prune it, it will cut it so that it will bear more fruit. So we are like that branch. God's word comes to cut. God comes to prune, to try us. So I examine my actions. I examine my motives. Why did I do this to this person? Why did this person treat me that way? Wow, did they treat me that way? Have I done a similar thing to somebody? I reflect. And then I realize that as a 
fruit bearing branch people will always come to you listen <laughs> every tree a tree is known by the fruit they bear right. and a tree does not bear fruit for itself the fruit you the mango tree does not produce mango so that the tree will eat the mango <laughs> so if you are fruitful you will attract people mm. but then people will come for different reasons <sighs> there are those who want to they, they're after your fruit they will do everything to get that fruit they will throw sticks at you they will throw stones at you just in a similar way you see a tree with fruits and you want to pluck it people will throw things at you it's because you are fruitful so balance things so expect that we are not saying that we should now leave ourselves to abuse that's where now protection comes in we bear fruit people we attract people who all they want is our fruit so anytime i'm feeling used or feeling thrown out or feeling you know uh, stoned i say well jesus said it if they did this to me they would do that to you so it balances it makes my mind to go uh, at peace and not be bitter towards people because i'm fruit bearing so they will throw stones they will throw trees they will throw sticks second set of people people just come all they want is the fruit they won't harm you but they will pluck the fruit once they eat the fruit they're gone the moment you don't bear fruit again you don't see them they don't care they're not even grateful just give us fruit <laughs> that's what we came for but then they are the third set of people there are four categories but i'll stop with the third today because of our time they don't they, they like your fruit right but they also protect the branch so they love you for your fruit. They love you as a branch. They look after you so you can bear much fruit. And I'm learning, get a balance so that you don't get bitter with people. Mm. You should just recognize people will come to you for as long as you keep bearing fruit. And don't stop bearing fruit. There's that tendency because we are stoned, because we are, we, sticks are used against us. We want to stop bearing fruit. No, if you stop bearing fruit, is to your hand so the fruit here the first important people love don't stop loving don't let your love grow cold because of iniquity lawlessness and wickedness no balance things look at jesus he said love one another as i have loved you i was sharing with a brother i said look at the church Jesus said, the Bible tells us, husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church. I said, look at the church we're talking about. And Christ still loves the church. He doesn't, he said, while we were yet sinners, that's when he died for mm. us. He didn't wait for us to say, you know, if I go and uh, say, sorry, I'm showing love and, the, you know, people are not reciprocating. Please don't stop bearing fruit. Just keep loving. But just know, recognize as you bear that fruit, you will attract different kinds of people. Just know how to put the boundaries in place. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Ohio. Thank you very much, sir. Have Please go and love you. your wife. Love uh, Irene more than ever. Thank her for us and your lovely, lovely children. Uh, we look forward to seeing yes, you another time. You want to say one last word as we hand over to the media? Yeah, just uh, thank you for the opportunity to um, to be on this uh, platform. Um, grateful to God for all the things I've learned um, since um, I um, God directed me to this ministry, and I, 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 it's really blessed my life and uh, in in a, a very important way shaped my understanding and my knowledge of God. Um, so I'm just very grateful, and I just um, to say, God bless you, and God bless uh, your wife and your family, and uh, everyone. Yeah, everyone in Love Assembly is my family. So, yeah. Thank you, Doctor Hayo. Privilege having you again. Congratulations, uh, Nomea Kanu. Married 25 years, been together 34 years with your husband. Keep loving each other. Okay. Wow. Let that capacity continue to expand as the years are. Yeah. Let new wine flow in as you change your heart every time. That's the key, Dr. Ohio. We mm. need to, it's either we have a change of heart completely mm. or we allow the heart of love to keep growing in capacity. Yeah. We must yeah. not stop bearing fruit, people. God bless you. Thank you for allowing this interesting topic. Do I love myself? Please go and meditate on this. God bless you. And 
See you same time next week, 7 p.m. Don't let your love grow cold. Good night. Man.